Hey guys, Tiny Bryson here, and how exactly do you get out of a timeshare? And in all honesty, guys, I started making this video for one person, and that's my grandpa. Over 10 years ago, he got into a timeshare and has been paying those maintenance fees for a very long time. And he wants to get rid of it. And he's like, I don't even use it anymore. And me and my wife are stuck paying for these fees. And usually they come during December time where you have to pay for gifts. So most of the time you have to end up putting it on a credit card and it's just fee, 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 fee. And by the way, when he got that entire thing, like Airbnb did not exist. So he really did think after being so, so crazy that this was going to be a great idea but while doing all the research to help my grandpa out i found that basically there are over 10 million people that have timeshares and a lot of them are not happy and they want to know exactly how to get out of this nightmare so in this video i'm going to give you seven ways to get out of a timeshare some will be free ways and some will be paid ways for those people that don't really want to do anything and don't mind cutting a check to get rid of this entire thing okay now this means guys that some of the options will be zero dollars thirty bucks twelve hundred dollars four thousand five thousand but it's better to pay that five thousand dollars or thirty bucks than to be stuck paying twelve hundred dollars and the price goes up by five percent every single year on average and those maintenance fees for like the next 10 20 years i'd rather just get rid of it right now pay that cost and then just call it a day and never walk that road again so do me a favor guys and like this video that way more people that have time shares find this video and actually watch it and get out of the whole timeshare thing now the first way to get out of a timeshare is a very simple way and it's called the the talk to the horse technique you know i know people that spend hours and hours and hours talking to people that cannot actually make a decision okay that means for example my mom had the habit that she would talk to everyone before she spoke to the decision maker makes no sense okay so what do you do if you have a timeshare the first person you talk to is not the person the attorney or the exit company or your friend no talk to the developer and talk to them about a deed back program or for example a surrender program now what this means is that if you are in a very good location, like right next to Disney or a spectacular view or whatever it is, sometimes the developer will actually be willing to actually buy you out. Sometimes, not always. But when that doesn't happen, for example, they will be willing to just release the deed and say, hey, okay, you're done here. They send you the paperwork and then you sign all the documents. You pay 30 bucks. You send it back to them and then boom, you are done and you are out. And by the way, remember, okay, when you're stuck in this bad deal and so many people are trying to get out, don't expect to make money, okay, unless or get any money back, unless you have like a spectacular location, which most people let's be honest we don't okay so that's the idea ask them about the deed back program and also the surrender program and again okay make sure you tell your story the correct way hey my name is brenda i've been paying for a while i pay my stuff in time but because of the pandemic everything going on i just can't handle this so i'm stuck between picking between my maintenance fees or feeding my kids and fee and pay my rent I can't do this anymore. So what are the options when I can actually, for example, get rid of this thing? That's the idea because I don't want to go through a foreclosure program because I know it's expensive for both of us and we can just avoid those things, okay? So talk to the person in charge of deed backs and the surrender programs. And by the way, they might call it different things, but it's just the I want out program in reality, okay? And by the way, guys, okay, I have this friend and he's in the real estate industry. And he tells me all the time, Tommy, you know what? This is one of the best businesses ever. And I'm like, no, it, it sucks. And he's like, no, no, no. It's good for the people that create it, okay? Imagine making a program or a product where people basically pay you to rent it out and they buy that ability and they use it for one week out of the year. They pay the whole maintenance cost for you. And whether they use it or they don't use it, they still got to pay you. It's a great business that works for the person that created it but not really for the person that bought it. And whenever you have something like that, usually people get very mad. And that's why you see so many of them being sold for people just trying to get rid of them. And I hate businesses like that. Now, 
The second way to actually get rid of this timeshare, okay? This is only gonna apply for two to 5% of you right now watching this video. If you just got this timeshare, like three days ago, or less than 15 days ago, okay? Depending on the state you live, and also the state you actually got this thing, you have something called, for example, the recession period, or for example, the recession laws. Now, what this stands for, to make it simple is, okay? Is that time period where you're actually able to take back your offer. Meaning, hey, I did that, but it's been less than three days or less than 15 days, depending on the state, like Alaska. And you say, well, I don't want to be a part of this. And you basically send them a cancellation letter. Make sure it is USPS certified mail because they like to lose things. So this way, there is no, I didn't get the letter. No, you have proof and have copies of everything. And the idea is if you do qualify, meaning you just got this thing less than 15 days ago, and you actually qualify, okay? You can actually go ahead and cancel before it is too late, all right? So it doesn't apply to everyone, but I wanted to mention it just in case you're fresh, okay? And you just got this thing, okay? And by the way, for the people watching this video, for the sake of trying to avoid this thing, remember, a timeshare is just you buying the right to be able to use this thing, okay? You don't actually really own any physical real estate. You're just buying the time, right? That's what you're actually buying. And you pick one week out of the year and they try to get you to upgrade. And they're like, hey, we can actually have you trade with other people an extra $100 and then you're actually able to stay somewhere else. The idea is stop, stop, stop. It's just a way for them to make more and more and more money because those maintenance costs are still going to come in. And we live in the 21st century, meaning, hey, we have Airbnb now. And for $1,200 a month in maintenance fees, I'd rather spend that 170 bucks a week, well, per day for that week on an Airbnb, on a very nice Airbnb, may I say so myself. Now, the third way to get rid of this timeshare is to sell it <laughs> or literally give it away, okay? Now, I know this funny story. It's about this farmer and this horse. The horse looks like a stud, great horse. One problem, it limps every now and then, meaning that sometimes it walks with a limp, you know, like, ah, like, ah, always stumbling, but sometimes it doesn't. The farmer takes it to the vet. The vet says, well, when it's not limping, sell it because that way you get rid of it and then that's someone else's problem. Now, one thing I will say is, don't sell it to your family or give it away to family. Why would you want to pass on a crazy liability slash bill to your family? Don't do that. Sell to somebody else that's interested in it and just wants to be a part of the whole, hey, I, I want to own a timeshare, you know? So sell to them. So where can you actually go to sell it? You can go on, for example, um, eBay. You'll find a lot of them on eBay, sell them for a dollar, <laughs> sell them for free, because people literally just want to get rid of them, okay? That's how bad it actually is. You can sell it on Craigslist also, or you can go to a website called um, tug2.com, where it's specialized in actually selling um, these timeshares. And also, you can also talk to a real estate agent to actually help you sell this thing. But remember, when you're selling, you're not going most likely to make your money back. And most of the times you have to offer some incentives, meaning, hey, I'll pay your dues for the first year. And then you basically pay them after because it's really that bad. I'd rather pay someone to actually have this thing and then not have to worry about it ever again. By the way, remember, okay, when you call the developer, and if they tell you no to the surrender or the deed back program, remember, you can always offer them an incentive. Like, hey, okay, um, is it possible for me to offer something else on top of it just to get rid of this thing? Because again, I'm not able to pay for this thing anymore and I don't want to enter default because that can be very expensive for the both of us, okay? Now, the fourth way, guys, to try to get rid of this thing is with an exit company that specializes in getting people out of timeshares. Now, I'm pretty sure you have been targeted by ads on Facebook or on the internet or on YouTube or via mail or the radio. You know why you get targeted? Because it's public information that you're a part of a timeshare. And they also know that people have timeshares usually want to get out of a timeshare. Okay. It's like one of those things like, um, like, like buying a boat. The best day is when you, when you buy it, you have two good days when you buy it and when you sell it because it's just that bad, it's just that expensive. Same thing here, okay? When you buy, okay. When you use it, okay. But now you're stuck paying this thing and you have to go to the same place and if you don't use it, you still pay, okay? So this company helps you literally in getting rid 
of this entire timeshare. However, they're doing all the work. I remember, right? You know when you try to change the date or you do like a trade or for example, you do like an upgrade. Guess what? Every time you do those changes, they add another contract and slap it onto your old ones. So now this company is in charge of breaking every single contract. And this takes between 12 to 18 months total, meaning a very long time. And it's expensive. It costs around like four to $5,000. But again, think about it this way. I pay 4,000 to $5,000 or I pay a thousand to twelve hundred, or some people have, for example, like eight hundred dollars, or I pay that much money for the next ten years. The answer is no. You might as well just get rid of it, pay that cost, and the next five to six years, you basically get your money back. That's the idea, okay? That's what I I would do. Now, that's if if you don't want to go through all the burden of trying to figure this out yourself. You don't have to pay someone, but it is a lot more easier to actually pay someone. Let's be real. Now, the fifth way to try to get out of this timeshare is you stop paying. Now, people do this for obvious reasons. One is foreclosure. If you foreclose, well, guess what? You kind of get rid of it, right? Um, second is to try to force the company or the developer to actually surrender the lease, okay? Or have you be able to surrender the lease? Because again, them or, I mean, you going into foreclosure is going to be a lot more expensive than they're just basically saying, okay, we'll take it back. Don't worry about it. We're done here, okay? That's going to be a lot better for them. But again, some people actually do this. It's called a technique, okay? But the idea is that, and by the way, some people basically, hey, I don't have the money anymore. So I either pay my rent or I feed my kids or I pay this maintenance fee. The answer is obvious. I am paying that fee, okay? So it all depends on how you want to use it. But again, remember, the consequences are real. So if you run into a very tricky company and they're like, no, 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 we're going to pursue you, they could literally have a collection company go after you. They can ruin your credit score, call you at all times of the hour, and all that stuff, okay? So it can be a big, big headache. So again, I would not do this first will not be my first option. I would try to go through everything else first until I get here. Because again, it could ruin your credit score, but it could also be like a technique to get them to say, hey, this, this guy or gal is serious about this thing and they really can't afford it. So use this with a grain of salt. But again, I personally would not do this, okay? Because it's fairly risky. Now, number six, guys, is if you're going through this entire process and it's going to take you a while, you could actually rent out your time there to someone else via um, Airbnb or via another service. Now, some developers accept this, some don't. If they don't do it, do you wanna do like illegal things behind the back to actually do it? The answer is I wouldn't, um, that's a gray area, but most of them, the big ones, actually allow you to actually have um, sub, sub, to actually sublet it, okay? Meaning you can actually rent it out to someone, and that's fine. The big risk comes, for example, if you rent it to the, to the wrong person and damage the property, that's going to be on you. So just make sure, if you do rent it, just make sure you have collateral. You know, like Airbnb, like if I go to somebody's Airbnb, I trash it that's going to be a cost on my credit card, okay? So yeah, you wanna make sure you use a service where if they don't take care of the property, something bad, you're not going to be liable for it and you're actually going to be able to make your money back. But it's something you do to try to offset the cost where you're trying to sell this thing. Because remember, this is not like selling a stock where you buy a stock today and minutes you sell it. No, it can take you a few months to move this liability because people don't wanna buy bills. And this is what it basically is, okay? Now, the seventh way, the last way to actually get rid of this thing is basically you can call an attorney that deals with timeshares. Again, this way is expensive, but they handle everything for you. But overall, guys, again, the first thing I would do is talk to the horse, go to the developer, tell him your story, what's going on. Talk about the um, the surrender policy or the entire deed back program and just try to get it out that way. That way it's free, it costs you very little and the hassle, I've heard people basically get rid of it that way in less than two months, okay? That way you're done and it's over with. So, by the way guys, I know people, I've read stories, I've heard stories of people saying, hey Tommy, I have this thing, I have it in Hawaii but to go there, I have to pay a bunch of money or I have it in Florida. I'm not longer going to Florida anymore. Or I hear about old folks saying, hey, my, my couple died, so I'm, I'm not really in a traveling mood anymore. The pandemic hit me, I can't pay for these things anymore. So again, this is why I made this video, to give you guys seven options and what your options actually are. 
And again, I would start from the top and work all the way to the bottom. But sometimes remember, be firm, be confident, and know what you're saying before you actually call in. And don't let them push you around. Don't let them offer you upgrades and you have to do this before that. No, no, don't upgrade to anything else. It just adds another contract, another slap onto the old contract, which will be more complicated if you hire an attorney or, for example, if you are an exit company. That's my advice, guys. And by the way, last thing here, I don't want you guys to get scammed here. There are a lot of companies that do scams, okay? So they say, hey, pay me up front, and then I'll do the whole thing for you. And all of a sudden, disappear with your money. So make sure you're using a solid company. You've done the research, you've done the background, and you know the company is official, okay? Because this market, there are a lot of desperate people trying to get out of this thing. So when you're desperate, you're probably not thinking at your best. So just calm down, relax, do your research, do all the work first, before you actually take the next step. And don't be afraid to lose some money while you're trying to get rid of this thing, whether it's 500 or a whole year of your maintenance fee, or maybe even two years of your maintenance fee, okay? As long as you get rid of this thing, that is possible, the best way possible, you're going to be good, you're going to be solid. I'll see you guys next time though. Thanks for watching, like this video. It helps a lot to spread the word. Subscribe also if you're interested in finance and money and credit cards and paying back debt. That's what I do on this channel. On top of that, also more content here on investing. My face is here. If you want to call me directly for a free call, no consultation, no selling the product, none of that stuff, just feel free to call me. The link is down below. Peace out. Long-term team is out.